Okay, this is uh, an addendum to the uh, 3-500Z amplifier build. I have some other tubes. This is a 3-400Z that I just couldn't resist playing with and I am immensely surprised. I get every bit as much power out of it. This is an iMac. You can see the logo there. The other tube that I was using, which I don't think is bad in any way, is this uh, Machlet. I guess that's how you say it. It is made in China. I'm not against China in any way. But it does look like the uh, little um, iMac does quite a bit. Is rated at 100 watts less of plate dissipation, but it does the same thing. I get every bit and even maybe a little bit more power out of it. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, I did have to go in and lengthen this right here. You know, the reason I do these videos is because this is the type of video that I look for all the time on how people did things. So let me show you another little detail. I use these uh, types of punches right here. They're actually paper punches, and I have a lot of them. See, here's one with a little tiny hole. Um, here's some with bigger holes. Here's some with uh, large holes that the big screws will fit through, even like a quarter twenty, a quarter inch hole. So I pick these things up at different places and I use these things uh, to punch holes in the, um, in the uh, copper strap. But anyway, I had, I'm going to... I'm not going to go through and make a whole video. I'm just going to make just, just one little posting. And there's one thing that I can't believe I forgot to post on the other one that I really need to document here for those that like to build stuff. And that is the underneath part of it. Uh, here's the RFN right here. Comes in, goes through, goes through this relay up here so that if the relay is not energized and the amplifier is effectively not here, it just comes in and goes out straight in from the transceiver, straight out to the antenna. But on the inside, I use these uh, types of uh, AC connectors now because I like to be able to unplug it and move the chassis around without wires hanging off of it. Of course, the fuse in series with it. This is the filament transformer. It's a 5 volt 15 amp. Here's another nice old ancient piece of uh, equipment made by b and an FC15. It's a filament choke. So you put the 5 volts in here, you take it out over here isolated. This is an inductor in there. It's got an inductor on, one, on, on each side of the filament winding. Of course, you short the filament windings together with a capacitor. So you want everything to be at RF, at the same point at RF. And the way that I uh, do the grid is I strap all the grids together with this uh, copper strap, solder them together with uh, 0 0.01 capacitors off the ground at each point to ground. Uh, some uh, books suggest that you also put like a 001 ceramic in here because they have a little bit less inductance in the micas, but I don't, I've never found that necessary. Here is the uh, capacitor that, that uh, is in series with the cathode. You must have that or you'll end up shorting one side of your uh, uh, filament lining to ground when you, when you hook it up to the output. Uh, so these are actually old capacitors from World War II stuff, 70 years old. These probably are too, but I know these are. And of course, here's the high voltage input right here. I ran a shielded cable. And uh, there's the uh, cathode tuned circuit up there, one that you see from the other side. It, it goes, uh, let's see, it comes in right here on this uh, piece of coax and goes through the, the, the Pi network through the coil out here and uh, through this blocking capacitor back into the uh, cathodes. So that's how that works. These are my high voltage shielded leads. This is the feed through from the bottom side. But anyway, this 3400Z, uh, I don't want to try to set it down. I might bust something here. This 3400Z just does an amazing job. I'm going to, here, I'm going to set it down. Just a beautiful little tube. I believe it was made in 1974. I think that's the uh, the code date on it. 
I'm not going to fire this thing up and, and go through another whole video, but uh, I needed to show the inside, uh, the underside of it, excuse me, and I needed to uh, show that this little tube plugs right into that 3500Z socket, and it didn't even take any different tuning. It's just, a, it, in my case, it was a direct replacement. I don't know if it'll be a direct replacement in your case or not, so keep that in mind. Well, I think I do have to add this little piece in. Uh, I get a little bit less load right here. See, only about 110 milliamps or so. 115. And so the plate uh, voltage rise is just slightly. Also, it might just be the time of the night when I got a little bit a higher line voltage. It is uh, almost 2 a.m. So I got just a hair over 3,500 volts, 3,550 or so. And without doing anything else besides just touching the tuning, which really hardly was required at all, there's the 3400Z in there. Again, the, the camera is always so overwhelming. I really wish, I really wish the camera could show you the, what it really looks like. But anyway, uh, into a dummy load, of course. Key down. Here's the power. 800 watts. Less grid current. Mm, about the same plate current. A bit less grid current, and uh, the tube does not show any more red in the plate. Drops to 3,000. And from behind, it's like that. It's absolutely beautiful. The um, it's a very nice, uh, healthy-looking orange plate. Let's see if I can get a little bit better shot of this thing in manual mode. Okay, and I think this might be a little bit better. Get too close. Let's get a little closer without getting too close. That's more like the uh, correct color of the plate, although the camera seems to make it more pink and red than orange. It's actually very orange. This is with the camera in manual mode. That seems to be a little bit more normal. Let's see if we can zoom in on it. Yeah, well, it looks about right. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. Feel the heat from it too. It's hot. 